The movie is set in the year 250 when the Earth is completely covered by water. The polar ice caps have melted, and sea levels have risen over 25 feet. With people living on the water, the world is now adapting to the new ways of living. People live on boats and have colonies that are made on ships. The entirety of human civilization has forgotten about living on land to the point that the idea is now a myth. The movie starts with a man, Mariner, who lives on this earth as a loner. He has his own boat made from the scavenged trash in the ocean called Trimaran, and recycles his urine as drinking water. He spends his days collecting artifacts and food from the bottom of the ocean. One day, while he is out in the ocean doing his regular chores, a stranger approaches him. The stranger first comes with a friendly face. After a while, he finds out that his limes, a rare fruit, are stolen. Just then another boat with smokers, the pirates of the new world, come to steal scavenged things from Mariner. Then, during the chaos, he finds out that the stranger is the one who stole his limes. Seeing this, Mariner gets furious and tries to get him. This makes him extremely furious, and he sails towards that stranger's boat. Even though his boat looks like it's made out of trash, the boat is extremely fast. He then sails right over the drifter's small boat, and destroys it, leaving him for the smokers. After that, he sets out to sail towards Adol, a colony that he had heard would make trades with him. At first, he is not allowed to enter. When shown that he has some good dirt, which is very valuable these days like a commodity, his entry looks legit, and then is given permission to enter. When he enters, he realizes that the situation there is worse than it is out there. People there have no food and are living in extreme poverty. He then meets a guy who gives him two hours to finish everything as here for. He goes to the market and tries to sell some dirt in exchange for some currency called chits. He finds one merchant willing to give him a huge chunk of money. Mariner asks the merchant to double the money. During that time, a guy named Noor is asking around about a girl with a tattoo that is a map of a dry land. After a while, he spots that girl, who is going by the name Enola. She is being taken care of by Helen, who is a local barmaid. Meanwhile, Mariner spends his chips on a tomato plant and some shelves for his boat. While he is returning to his boat, a family approaches him to impregnate their daughter, because inbreeding within the colony was causing huge complications in children, and they didn't want that for their daughter. But Mariner refuses them, weirded about the fact that a man is rejecting a woman. The people of Adol take him into custody. During that, one of the people discovers that he is a mutant with gills and webbed feet. Unfortunately, the people of Adol are horrified by the mutation and decide to cage him. They attack him and he is imprisoned until further notice. He is caged over at the docks. The mariner notices some of the young people scavenging and stealing some of Trimaran's belongings as they leave the atoll secretly. Helen starts talking with her investor buddy Gregor on the other side, who is also looking for dry land. She tells him that Enola might be in danger and that all three of them should leave that place as soon as possible. Gregor tells her that they can't do so because no one can read the map tattooed on her back. The girl looks mysterious and always draws weird pictures and symbols that she does not recognize. Later, Enola tells them that Mariner might be able to read the tattoo, and that Gregor should ask him. At night, Gregor carefully approaches Mariner. He starts asking him a bunch of questions about his mutation. He also asks him about dry land and everything. Suddenly, someone comes and their conversation ends with Gregor leaving. In the morning, everyone surrounds Mariner, and a decision is made to drown him in a pit of organic sludge while in the process of recycling him. At the same time, an adult's lookout spots a large army of smokers, led by Deacon, coming to their settlement in search of Enola. Then, when the locals begin to fear an attack, the execution of the Mariner is postponed. Helen tries to flee with Enola on a hot air balloon that Gregor made as the smokers attack, but the balloon is unintentionally released too soon, leaving Helen and Enola behind. Amidst all this, Mariner's cage is knocked and he is slowly drowning in the pit. But, the two girls decide to save him hoping that in return he would also save them. Helen goes to save him, giving him the ultimatum that she'll do so only if he agrees to take both of them with him. Mariner agrees. Mariner then goes to his ship. The girls open the gates of Adol as an escape route. Meanwhile, Deacon interrupts their escape. Mariner quickly fights them off and all of them escape safely. Meanwhile, Deacon finds out that Enola escaped with the help of Mariner, then sets his crew out to get her. Back at the Mariner's boat, Helen asks him about his knowledge of dry land. He tells her that he does and they have a better chance of getting there if they throw Enola overboard due to limited supplies. Helen instantly rejects the idea and tries to change his mind by offering herself to her. But, to her dismay, he refuses her. She then grabs a gun and threatens him but Mariner knocks her out. 
At that time, Deacon and his smoker's base is located at a giant oil tanker. Inside, Deacon tries to get his doctor to make him a prosthetic eye. After the failure to do so, he instead gets a patch for his eye. Then, upon inspecting he realizes the ship's oil is low, and asks his minions to quickly go look out for her via the airplane. On the boat, when Enola starts drawing her symbols on the ship, Mariner gets furious. He throws her overboard and Helen screams. She yells that she cannot swim so she goes to get her. Mariner changes his mind about leaving them and decides to save them. Suddenly, the plane sent out by Deacon finds them. Mariner goes down to prepare a weapon but fearful Helen panics and starts shooting. To make the situation worse, the plane instead starts circling the plane with a metal rope. This causes serious damage to the plane. With efforts to cut that rope, he climbs on it, but the airplane pilot shoots it first. Mariner plunges into the ocean, and the pilot escapes. Furious with what just happened, Mariner decided to cut both of the girls' hair as a punishment. He tells them to never touch anything on the boat ever again. He also asks Enola to never draw on the boat again. Back at the smoker's den, the pilot tells Deacon about the girl's whereabouts. He then tells them to intercept the three on the way. On the other side, Mariner comes across a drifter. He tells them that he has a very important paper that might have clues on the dry land. Mariner tells him that he doesn't have anything he can trade with. The drifter simply asks for half an hour with Helen. Mariner agrees. The drifter along with Helen, who protested, is locked below the deck. Upon finding that the papers are worthless, he quickly goes to save Helen from the man. The drifter gets furious and tries to kill him. Fight happens but Mariner kills him and throws him off the boat. All three of them are now desperate for food, so he shows the girls how he hunts for food. He goes into the water with his gun. He acts like a bait in the ocean and to his credit a mutated shark tries to swallow him. Instead, he kills that shark first and all of them have a feast. The next morning, Mariner teaches Enola how to swim. Helen is happy with the bonding of the two. After a few days, the trio is once again ambushed by the smoker from underwater. The Mariner realizes the ambush and turns his boat to escape. They barely manage to escape, even after the deacon opens fire with his rifle, wounding the Mariner. He asks Helen if she knows anything about why they are being ambushed again, and again. Helen tells him that she is the girl with a tattoo of a map to the dry land. He tells her that it's all a myth and has never come remotely close to a dry land. Listening to it, Helen gets angry. In an effort to convince her, he takes her underneath in a homemade diving bell. Mariner goes without it because he has gills and he can swim. They go deep down into the submerged city. When they return back, they realize that smokers have come again. They threaten to kill Enola if they do not hand her over immediately. Enola, who is hiding, resurfaces upon hearing the firing of guns thinking her friends are in danger. Enola gets caught. The smokers, upon the deacon's order, start trying to kill the other two. But two of them dive into the ocean. He kisses her so that he can breathe for the both of them. Upon returning, they find that Enola along with the smokers are now gone. Mariner tells Helen how much is feels lonely, and Helen kisses him. Both of them share intimate moments together. The next morning, he starts looking at Enola's drawing, and starts making connections with the images in the National Geographic collections. When he looks at the various objects such as trees and other land objects, he thinks that all this talk about dry land might actually be true. After a while, Gregor finds them in a hot air balloon. He takes them towards the makeshift atoll with survivors. They discuss the various ways to get to the dry land, only to discover that their efforts are useless without Enola. Some argue that rescuing her is much more of a danger. Mariner goes off to save her alone. He goes off on a boat alone. After reaching the smoker's den, he starts killing anyone who gets in the way. Mariner confronts the deacon and holds out a flare, threatening to ignite the oil reserves and the tanker unless he returns Enola. Deacon, thinking that it's a bluff, doesn't believe it. But Mariner drops the flare into the oil reserve of the ship, and the ship explodes into flames. Amidst everything, Deacon takes Enola and tries to fly with her on the plane. But Mariner stops them by anchoring the plane with a metal wire. He rescues her and both of them embrace each other. Meanwhile, Gregor with his hot air balloon shows up. They immediately let down a rope for the Mariner to escape as he brings Enola to Helen. But to everyone's surprise, Deacon starts climbing that rope too. Mariner kicks and throws him into the water. Deacon then finds a jet ski and shoots at the hot air balloon. It disbalances the balloon and Enola falls into the ocean. While Deacon is trying to get her, Mariner ties himself with a cord and Bungie jumps into the ocean to get her. Right after he gets her, the three jet skis with Deacon and his men collide with one another. They die due to the explosion. Later on, Gregor manages to identify the tattoo on Enola's back as the coordinates, and the reverse directions after a few days of flying. They discover the dry land upon following the coordinates filled with vegetation and sand and everything they've never seen before. The entire group is fascinated by the discovery. They go inside the small hut there and find skeletons of people. 
They discover that the remains are of Enola's parents. They realize that maybe the girl was sent out with the hopes that she would bring more people to the dry land. The people give her parents a proper burial. Everyone in the dry land seems to be having fun, but Mariner feels out of place. The dry land feels awkward and like he doesn't really belong there. He decides to leave and go out into the ocean where he feels at home. Enola tells him that maybe he will adapt but he feels that the ocean is his calling. Everyone respects his decision and he starts building a wooden boat. Helen and Enola bid him farewell. Mariner promises to tell others about the dry land. The movie ends with Helen and Enola climbing to the highest hill to watch him sail away, only to discover that they are standing on top of Mount Everest.